Have you ever had a work environment that was just bad news? Uh, maybe you had an overnight shift doing a job that you did not enjoy. Maybe you loved your work, but you weren't compensated fairly. You might have had a challenging relationship with a boss, or maybe you have an uncooperative coworker. Perhaps the work itself is especially difficult or dangerous or seemingly pointless. Or maybe you've even been asked to do something you knew was wrong. And it's not just working for a paycheck that can be difficult. If you are raising children, caring for an adult relative, or maintaining a household, that's difficult. If you are volunteering, that can be difficult as well. Having a bad news work environment is a challenge for many people. But no matter where you work, in an office, at your home, or on the road, Jesus has good news for you. Welcome back for session two of our growth group series, The Gospel Comes Home. Together, we're exploring four important biblical places and how God brings his good news into the specific contexts of our lives as his people. Now, in scripture, we find a handful of bad news places, places where God's people do not want to be, places like Egypt, the wilderness, the dreaded city of Nineveh, which is so bad that Jonah tries to run in the opposite direction. But no place in Scripture brings as much bad news as Babylon. Do you remember the infamous Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11? That's how God's Word introduces us to Babylon, which became a powerful empire that continued to produce confusion and violence. The city of Babylon was located in modern-day Iraq, and by about 600 B.C., the empire stretched for hundreds of miles in all directions. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon were considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was an impressive empire spanning 193,000 square miles, the size of Michigan, Wisconsin, and all five Great Lakes combined. And when God's Old Testament people did not listen to his word or do his will, he allowed the Babylonian army to capture Jerusalem. The Babylonians took many people into exile in their capital city, 900 miles to the east. Babylon is a bad news place. God's people did not want to be there. They were surrounded by people who did not know God, and in the midst of a foreign culture with different values, different priorities. And yet, God had important work for them to do there. And though the people had strayed far from him, God was never far from them. Through Jeremiah, God tells his people that they will sit down and stay a while in Babylon. But they should not grow weary just because they have to live and work in a bad news place. He wants them to plant gardens, enjoy their produce. They should live full, productive lives in the homes that they built. Most notably, God wants them to care for their neighbors, even when that work is difficult. How could they care for others in a place like this? Because God was still caring for them. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. We see how Daniel and his friends take this message to heart in the first chapter of the book that bears his name. Daniel and his friends are nobles from the kingdom of Judah, so they are prime candidates for government work in Babylon too. And, perhaps surprisingly, they thrive in a bad news work environment. They are given new names. They are taught a new language. They serve a new king and are given new responsibilities, none of their own choosing. And yet they serve faithfully, obeying King Nebuchadnezzar to the fullest extent that they can, working for the benefit of all people during their time in exile. 
But above all, they continue to worship the one true God, even when it was prohibited by law. This theme comes up repeatedly throughout the book of Daniel. In chapter 1, we read how Daniel and his friends refused to eat any unclean foods, yet remain healthy and strong, fit for service before the king. In chapter 3, we find the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refusing to bow down before King Nebuchadnezzar's idol. They were thrown into the, a furnace, but a messenger from heaven delivers them. And in chapter 6, we find the beloved story of Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel already had a routine of praying three times per day, and he keeps praying, even when the king's edict prohibits such worship. But what I find most remarkable is they keep working well. They keep serving well. Daniel and his friends aren't just reluctant hostages. They are devoted servants to King Nebuchadnezzar in the midst of terrible mistreatment. All of this takes place in Babylon, which symbolizes evil and confusion more than any other place in Scripture. You see, God promised to provide for his ancient people during their time of exile. He would provide for their well-being so they could focus on the well-being of others. And God gives us the same promise. We all have spent time in a place a little bit like Babylon, a place we didn't want to be, doing work we did not want to do. But God calls us to care for others because he has promised to care for us. He has secured our eternal well-being through his son, Jesus, and that's good news we can take with us wherever we go and wherever we work. May God's peace and comfort go with you, even in bad news places. Even in a place like Babylon, you are never alone, for the Lord goes with you. May he guide you and your group members as you continue to read, learn, discuss, and pray together.